And here we are live with Miss Jen Brumall, Mr. JQ, Mr. Ming Chen, and Mr. Mike Zapsik. Thank you all for stopping by. What's going on? Hey. Not much. I figure we, we get our weekly dose of, of a shared universe goodness in here and oh. figure I'd bring along some uh, some some friends of ours like like Jason and, and Jen and kind of let people know what's going on in our worlds today. Yes. I love it. I love so it. We'll, we'll, we'll start off with you, Jen. You know, what, what have you got going on right now besides the whole at home locked in? I'll let you tell the story. Because just basically homeschooling, which is a joy. Not really. <laughs> it's, it's tough, but yeah, that's that's been what it is now. That that's where we are. <laughs> it's homeschooling and, and art. And homeschooling and art. Yeah. Um, so, so, so we were kind of talking about this a little bit earlier. So, so, do you have a little more respect for teachers like Jason here who who? <laughs> <laughs> who uh, have to deal with your your offspring for for most of the day during the week? I have a ton of respect for anyone who has to deal with the offspring. <laughs> I did before this, <laughs> um, but no, I think that this might open the eyes of a lot of people um, of what you know what all it all entails, and just like keeping kids focused, especially when they're younger. Um, so that's that's been the tough thing. But you know, I think that teachers. I hope that teachers get get their due after all of this and i hope people are like oh yeah <laughs> there, yes. speaking of teachers jason you know what's, what's been going on with your world of 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 pretty much the same thing homeschooling and then but also dealing with other kids yeah i, I got my own too that we have to homeschool around here um uh, uh ninth grader who is beside herself because she can't try for volleyball right now oh. um oh. my youngest is just missing her friends and you know, she's one of those happy to be here type. You know how Jalen is. Um, but as for me, I, I have to make lesson plans and I can't force the kids to do it. But the same token, I have to try to egg them on to do it. Uh, I also run the school social media page. So I, I have to give updates without giving updates, if that makes any sense. I got I to gotta dance around the subject a lot with the, with the students. Uh, but... Um, I, I actually talked to the principals about using this format, uh, about doing a live talk with all the principals. So once they all buy into it, we're probably going to be using uh, StreamYard to uh, do it. Yes. Yeah, I think it's a great thing. I didn't know you were a teacher, Jay. Um, what? How long have you been teaching, uh, and what, what grade do you teach? I teach fourth, fifth, and sixth grade uh, computers. So I, get, I have a nice variety of students in my in my uh, arsenal um i've i went to school to be a teacher believe it or not and um i lived in fort lauderdale for a long my whole life up until uh 11 years i've been in mississippi um but when i graduated uh high school i went to college to be a teacher and my father said my son's not going to be a teacher so i went my own way to do it and then like everybody else in fort lauderdale you start working in the bar industry you make your rent in one night and it's like, Hey, I'm going to stick to this. And uh, I, I got out of teaching, but I always, I was always a corporate trainer for every job I held. So I was still teaching even though I wasn't teaching. Oh, and also just uh, Ming and Mike, uh, uh, Jason has y'all to think about the fact that, yes, yeah, that's, that's Jason's brother. Just kind of chimed My in. brother like um, troll me. They actually went ahead uh, after <laughs> you came down here last time, uh, Ming, yeah. he ended up, uh, uh, basically mimicking the stuff that you had shown us here for our podcast studio. And they have their own podcast studio slash like video production program there in the school yeah. where they do their morning announcements and everything else. And it's pretty much all thanks to a shared universe that they, that, that, that came about. I, I'm putting that on the poster then that we, we launched a whole program and, uh, and we'll, we'll just say it's a whole state of Mississippi. We'll, uh, <laughs> We'll stretch it out a little bit. Yeah, that, that <laughs> podcast class that we that we took at the shop, I took all that information and used it. And uh, my sixth graders, we podcast every now and then. We I can't put it live due to to the privacy rights, sure. but uh, you know it goes throughout the school though. That's awesome, and uh, and I I have fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. That's like hormone central. So I don't know how you deal with that, but yeah, God bless you. That's <laughs> it's it's rough. Yeah. 
Well, we got along to it. So, uh, Mike, what's been going on with you the past week? How's the shop been doing? How's uh, the studio and, and, and doing all these these live streams has been for y'all? I've been here. I've been I've been live streaming. Uh, live streaming's been a lifesaver. It's you know I go in uh, to the shop and I I get a few phone calls for people who are looking for stuff, which is cool. Uh, speaking of which, and before I forget, Scott, how'd you do on uh, your sales last week? Quite quite honestly, we we haven't sold a thing. <laughs> oh, but wow. but you know what? It was honestly it was a start. I mean. True. It's okay. something I want to I want to continue on. You know, it's, it's one of those things. I'm I'm just like with anything else. If if you expect to be successful when you immediately start, you're you're delusional. So you know, Wait, as soon on. as really, oh crap. well, yeah. I mean, right, right. <laughs> oh dude, believe me. I, I mean, you and I need to sit down and talk. But I, I can't tell you how many stories people have come in and and they're they've asked. Well, you know, hey, I want to open my own comic shop. Well, my first questions are: one, do you like money? Hmm. Two, do you, you like like any. you know to make a living? And if the answer of two of those questions, either one of those questions is yes, do not open a comic book shop. Right. This is something you have to do because either either A, you've been in business for quite a while already, or B, it has to be something that you you actually enjoy doing and you can accept, you know, making it by on a meager salary. Right. Uh, or C, you, you inherited a comic book shop. <laughs> right. I mean, it, it, it's uh, it's I mean. You guys actually have have been very fortunate in the fact that you know you had you had Kevin behind you and plus the the TV show with Comic Book Men. So, I mean, with, without a doubt, we could probably could say that you guys are probably the the uh, biggest as far as in in stature and and uh, reach than any other comic shop in the world. Right. You you have the I'll outreach that. That, that most places don't have, and so but you know. We look around, you know, like like even now. I mean, I'm, every day I'm looking, I'm seeing uh, shop X Y Z is shut down because of this stuff. Because this was their sole source of income, and most of these places are are. I mean, I'm lucky. I have a, a another job that I use to pay my my normal bills, but most of these guys re rely on this, guys and girls, and they, you know, this has been devastating to them. Yeah, absolutely, and I mean, we're not immune to that. I mean, Kevin's large S only goes so far. It's like, <laughs> when, when are you opening again? And, you know, this is unfortunately, it's it's not in our hands. So uh, I would love to get new product in. I would love to let like three or four people in at a time and let them browse and spray them down with Lysol. Oop. Yeah, which well, is. Yeah. So, what, I'm sorry. That's what Scott's been doing, right? Uh, you've been letting. You're still kind of open right now, right? Well, well, up until recently, we've been shut down except for mail order and things like that. But okay. in the past week, I went ahead and there there is little loopholes in the laws and rules and everything else. So what we're doing is we're we're allowing no more than three people in the store at any given time. We're wiping everything down. We're spraying everything down. Uh, but I'm also being very, very kind of. Um, uh, strict on it to the point where I'm almost being rude. I had to show to tell uh, a lady the other day, her and her friend wanted to come in. I was like, well, okay, can we help you with anything? And she's like, Oh no, we're just, you know, we're just passing time. We just want to look around. And I'm like, I was like, ma'am, look, if you, if you have a purpose to be in here, if there's something yeah. you're looking for, we're more than happy to help you. But you know, if you're just in here because you're bored at home, we're trying our best to keep from spreading this disease. So, you know, sorry, but we're, we're, we don't want your kind of business coming in right now. If you want to come in later on and look around, feel free. But during this time of this crisis, it just can't happen. Keep your cooties at home. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love that you got people coming in. I mean, it's like, eh, hey, you know, we're, you got loiterers coming in. Just want to browse. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean my, tire kickers, man. Yeah, Michael tell you, we, we call them looky loos where they come in, they just want to look around and spend 30 minutes just looking at this. Oh, this is cool. I would love, I remember having this as a kid. And Never any intention of buying anything. Not <laughs> one dime. You know what you could get? You should get blank, blank, blank. Then I'd buy it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've heard that too. Oh, all the dang time. All do you have time. any Casper? There was a Casper with a ghost on the cover. Do you remember that one? It's like, yes, I do. I just sold it. Sorry. You're like, what? what? Well, <laughs> well, most, I mean, yeah, so most of the stuff we do, I, I, uh, you know, the people always come in and ask for the most obscure oh. things. Oh. 
And it's, it's like, you know, okay, uh, I'd like to buy four copies of X-Men, Giant Size X-Men number one. Oh, you don't have four copies? Oh, I don't want anything there. <laughs> Your store sucks. You don't have four copies? <laughs> it's not 10.0? Yeah. Come on out, right? Yeah. <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of crap hole you run in here? <laughs> But I, I'll be honest, that, that is, is weird. I mean, I love our clientele that we have, but uh, there are, uh, and I'm sure it's universal across every place. I guarantee you, I could describe one 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 of our customers, and you could sit there and tell me, Mike, that that you have somebody just like him. And I guarantee you, if you told me a story about somebody else, like, yeah, that's Bob Bob Smith. You know, I mean, we know people yeah. all exactly like that. They're they're everywhere. Oh yeah, we do. The one guy who comes in and is superior to every other oh, yeah. comic book guy. Yes. Well, you know what? I have all these. I, I don't need any back issues. The, then the he one just, guy who, uh, who if it, if it came out past 1984, it's crap. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we got we got two of those guys. <laughs> we, we just <laughs> <Chinese> <laughs> twins. <laughs> we have two, not just one. Well, yeah, I, honestly, I think we, we have about two also. So I think there must like be like common practice. Just yeah, there's got to be two everywhere. Just, <laughs> I think there are more than two. You've never been. <laughs> I've, uh, Scott, uh, have, you, have you got anyone uh, just call in the store just to talk just because they, they want to hear your voice? <laughs> actually, uh, uh, oddly no. enough, no. I, haven't no. anybody call. I haven't had anybody call yet, but I've had people just like email. Our, our message on Facebook or our Instagram, they're like, like, yeah, we just wanted to make sure you're doing okay. And it's the same people over and over. So apparently only three people like me. But uh, other than that, it's, it's been, <laughs> not been too bad. <laughs> That's nice. There, um, there was an article some way forwarded to me uh, by a guy named Leonard Pitts from the Austin American uh, newspaper. And he basically described as like, you know what, Wednesday – now Wednesday is just a Wednesday. Before Wednesday was the day you would go and hang out with everybody at the store. Right. And and he was talking about how much he, he missed that. And uh, yeah, it stinks. It well, stinks. that's the worst. Part. That's the one thing about this is, and I'm sure Michael agree with me is is, you know, you you got your your customers that that test your limits, but but also it's it's the experience of going in and socializing and talking and and enjoying. Yeah. Comic oh, books sure. itself is not just the 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 fact of, of grabbing your books and leaving and going home and reading them. It's, it's the whole be willing to share your experiences to go through it. Well, share your nerddom. You know, it's kind of like you find your people and you get to find people who are just as passionate as you are. Like oh, I, I, <laughs> I, th I think you sent your dad the link. But oh. he, he's on the video link right now. I can see him, but I haven't brought him in. Should I bring him in? Sure. I mean, well, no, he's not going to want to go live, but he wants well, to watch. No, I think. Like, well, I Al, Al, you can, you can watch, you don't just don't click that link. Just go to the shop page or the shop YouTube page and you can just watch. Yeah. Or I guess you can hang out backstage. <laughs> <laughs> or you can hang out backstage too. Yeah. You can watch from here. Who yeah. cares? <laughs> and Jen, I think you're, you're absolutely right that it's like a shared experience because yeah. Scott and I are of an age um n n a little bit of ming and uh, i don't know jay you you seem a little younger so but i'm 40 threat uh, okay well threats of physical violence were <laughs> absolutely in the realm of possibility when we were growing up reading comics you kept mm -hmm. them to yourselves the the people that um you hung around with who you know, read comics as well. And, and there were few and far between who had the same level of passion that we did. You know, now, now we're all sort of out. And, right. Uh, well, now it's, know. now it's accepted. You're right. And see, for me, when I was getting into comics as a kid, it was really weird for me. It wasn't threat of violence, but it was just, you're a girl. <laughs> you know? What are you doing here? And I was like, I, that never, never on my watch. And I'm sure never on Scott's watch. <laughs> So normally, when a girl walked in, most of the guys are there like, <gasps> humming, 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 humming. Yeah. Uh, they pulled a Ralph Cramden on me. Yeah, exactly. I was a teenager and stuff, too. So it was like, you know. Oh, was, yeah. Puberty uh, central. There you are. And I was walking in. And of course, but the, that was a thing that I love. Like, um, I love just sitting down and I would just sit down and just doodle in the corner and just listen to people chat. And that was just being able to be there and be around it and to, you know, find people who love that nerd culture and 
are very passionate about who would win what. <laughs> well, see, you were very lucky though. You had parents that actually helped helped encourage your creative yeah. uh, outlets and everything else. So, you know, rather rather than somebody tell you, oh, oh, quit that drawing, you know, be a doctor, be a nurse, be a lawyer. You actually had somebody who would encourage your yeah. your creative outlets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I had I had family who, because um, my passion in comics was the upswing in the '90s when all of that, you know wild cats and all of that stuff was happening so that was that was me <laughs> well you also had you also you also had vertigo which yes. i think is amazing right. so yes. and so it was really cool and then of course it was that digital coloring which was all new and you were like oh my god it's amazing and i had my dad's old spider-man comics and then he you know my dad i grew up with a lot of nerd culture he had a whole star wars collection that i wasn't allowed to play with yeah uh. Man, I got in big trouble because <laughs> I climbed the couch. <laughs> I got his on Solo and Leia, and I was making him get married. <laughs> I busted so you, one out of the package. <laughs> so you're the one who did the expanded universe, Jen. Okay, I got gotcha. <laughs> uh, you. At the very least, blame for that. At the very least, it doesn't matter my fanfic. I'm going to be upset here. <laughs> okay, but just make sure that you mailed it to yourself back in 1993. <laughs> no, it was just, you know, he he introduced me to all that. And then my cousin, um, I broke into my cousin's closet. He had a whole ton of comics and he wouldn't let me touch them because I had cooties and he liked to draw and I got the the offs that he had multiples of. So you broke into his his closet? <laughs> was it like Fort Knox? I don't know. Was, we weren't allowed in there. He had he had oh, okay. two sisters, and then of course you know a girl cousin. So he, it was like he needed his private. He, well, you know, he just needed to be <laughs> away from the world. And I was, and I was that age once. Comics. I remember. Yeah, I found the comics, and then it was like it was over. It's like oh, it's amazing. And yeah. just let everybody know, I went ahead and posted up here too. This is uh, Jen oh, Store okay. on here. Uh, if, you want, if you want to buy any of her prints, you want to buy any of her stuff, you want to contact her for commissions. You can put in the address right there. Uh, I am actually very, very proud of the fact that I am the person who named her store. <laughs> so, yeah, we were, but yeah, this is her thing. And then also, just to let everybody know, if you're wanting to do something like this, if you're anywhere around the world, you can go to hey. a .com and you can book, you can do the same thing. You can do it with Ming, you can do it with Mike, you can do it with Ming and Mike. Wait, that didn't sound right. Or you can do it, you can do it without them. You can just enjoy yourself. Yeah. A little bit dirtier than you, you thought, Scott. I got uh, you. Well, well, I'm about two beers in, so well, what can I say? All right, well, you don't you don't care by this point. Like it's hey, I kicked that lady just two it's mild looky loo out, and uh, it's Miller time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, it's more of a, a, a lesion. Legion space dust time, but that's good. <laughs> it's Chlordney time. I got you. Yeah. Oh my God, that is so nerdy. Uh, it's, uh, actually, not, I was I was scrolling through earlier on. And I saw a thing where uh, the guys from and I almost want to order some in, but then I was like, I kept thinking, well, I'm not open. I can't sell it. But they're doing a special on that. Uh, was it the Liquid Death Mountain Water? But yeah. their their ad is is phenomenal. It says, "Don't buy this. You're stupid if you buy this. What are you thinking?" And then they go on to describe how in a little post about, you know, hey, our, our account's been hacked, but you know what? If you really want to buy something here, we're doing a special. <laughs> That's genius, yeah. Uh, what do they call We're right? not sponsored by Liquid Death Water. Right, but. reverse psychology. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I would buy it. I don't know what shipping on water is, but uh, I'm thinking it's not. It's not it's it was not. pretty expensive. For, for Actually, for five cases, it was $26. Jesus. Wow. That's that's genius. It's like, look, they're so cool. They don't need our money. Oh yeah, it, it, I mean, the marketing on the thing is freaking phenomenal. I wish I would have thought of some of this stuff way, way ahead of time. I, you look back and think about how how stupid some of this stuff is, and how how asinine and 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 crazy it is. And, and you you're thinking, well, damn, I remember thinking about this twenty years ago, but we didn't patent it. M many a drunk nice like that. You know, I saw, I saw Stanches over there. You know, we've we had idea. many talks about things that have been invented since then. And like, holy crap. I mean, if only I would have invented the stuff from Back to the Future way back then. <laughs> you go, man, I wish I'd made that sham well. 
Damn, I should have gone with the crazy sports almanac. Yes. I'll tell you. And, uh, oh, speaking of, of all this other stuff, too, you two, uh, Mike and Ming, y'all introduced me on our last little thing. You, you brought about the whole Jack Acid flashback thing, and then yeah. Ming sent me some links. Dude, I'm, I'm, I am I'm am completely enthralled with that stuff now. I have sat oh, there. Cool. And, I take it to work and sit there and listen. And I told Ming I actually wanted to, like, we were doing the, the Karate Kid one. And I wanted to try to see if I could bring up the movie and coincide it when y'all were watching it and talking about it. And he's like, dude, don't even worry about it. Just listen to it. And sure enough, I did. It was freaking phenomenal. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, Ming and I are kind of proud of that. And uh, our two co-hosts, uh, the Ready, Set, Review, Matt and Anthony, they're they're funny as hell. They're amazing. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to figure out a movie that I know very, very well that is, that is not a comedy or anything like that. And I, <laughs> I, I, want, to, I want to join in because, I, I mean, I mean, to me, it's like it's like the MST3K stuff, but but even better. <laughs> yeah, because it's you don't have to. You can do like legit movies, and you don't have to pay for it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you sit there and just talk about it as, as it goes on. Which Jen and, and Jason, anybody watching, they um, the 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 jackets of flashbacks when they they watch a movie, and they just sit there and talk about facts and stupid stuff about it and things like that. Jason, you would probably you, you too. You'd probably love to join in and just. Freaking completely go crazy with it. Teen Wolf. Teen Wolf. That's a good one. <laughs> oh, Teen Wolf. We could actually stop right at the the, um, the crowd scene. Right yes. That guy's walking down. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, you have to go right to the end for that, though, right? It's literally right at the end, right? Yes. Well, it's close to the end. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. Awesome. So, um, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean. I right <laughs> I, uh, everyone's got that one or, or that one movie that they know backwards and forwards and would love to talk about what they know about it and, and what they were feeling as they were watching it. And, uh, you know, we're nerds, so, of course, we know all these facts, these unknown facts about a movie. And, and um, yeah, there's there's something, yeah, it was like, wait a minute, we could hook all this up and just have people – We could people could book a session where they can come in and do their own movie commentary. Um, fun. I think back in 96 or 97 – I had gotten uh, Kevin's. Uh, uh, it was on Laserdisc, a copy of Clerks, one of those big Laserdisc. <laughs> and I saw on the the special features, I was like, audio commentary. Like, what what the heck is that? I didn't even know what it was. And I, I popped it in, and I and they were talking over the movie, and telling uh, all their facts. And it's like, this is awesome. This is this is uh, this is fantastic. You get all this inside knowledge that you wouldn't have gotten before. So I started devouring Laserdisc um, uh, by by the handful and then DVDs came out and uh, those were kind of standard special features as well. And um, for a while I was like, all right, well, I, I guess you can't do a mo movie commentary unless you've made the movie or you were in involved. Yeah. Right. And I was like, wait, that's not true. It's like, nah, you probably know more about these movies than, than some of the people who were involved in, like they haven't, they haven't watched it like 350 times. Like right. we have. And um, so it was, I was like, Hey, let's give this a shot. And uh, it was so much fun. So we're opening it up to everybody, and um, we might try to do it here. I mean, you can, you can play the movie on here. You can screen share the movie on here, if you have the volume low enough. I don't think the algorithms will be able to pick up that you're watching the movie and violating <laughs> any copyrights. So it's, it's, it's something I, I may try this week with maybe just a scene. Um, I was thinking about just doing the the um, the Battle of Yavin Four from Star Wars: A New Hope. Oh yeah, just doing that as a test before we go on to a full length feature. Well, why, why even worry about the the volume whatsoever? You could just completely lower the volume and just yeah, continue to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it's like, not like no one knows, like you know, yeah. stealing Target, like you don't know what Porkins is saying. Yeah, you don't even need that. So, oh, and by the way, uh, Dave Bain is it, not called Jackass on flashback. It's Jack Acid flashback. Like uh, acid acid flashback. Or, or uh, Dave, uh, Dave, I'll have the link, link here for you. There you go. Yeah, it's, and honestly, it's Dave. I. I I was completely astonished. I said once I found it, I I, I had to message Ming afterwards. I thought it was Jackass flashback as well. But uh, as we were talking, but once he sent me the link, I'm, as I said, it's my newfound thing that I completely just go crazy for it. I, I get to spend 24 hours at work at the fire department, and dude, that's that helps me just pass the time so much more. Thanks, Scott Ming. We've got to do another 24 hours worth of it for Scott to to be able to. You know, so, I mean, 
Honestly, I can see it. Like if you're even if like you're on a, a drive, a plane ride, just you know putting it in, listening to it, right, dude. It, they're phenomenal. They were they were actually a lot of fun. Yeah, and uh, okay. you know the initial thought was, all right, we'll we'll record the audio commentary as a podcast track, and then you could pull up the movie and watch along with us. And then I was like, you don't even really need the movie. You've seen the movie. You've seen Roadhouse. You've seen Karate Kid. Right. Um, I, I you may have seen Cocktail a hundred times, but you don't even need the the movie. You don't even need to be watching the movie. To be enjoying it, so and, uh, yes, Devin Snowden isn't clerk, the clerk commentary where Jay fell asleep. Yes, uh, he was drunk as he was doing it. Um, they shot it on the set of Mallrats uh, after after a, a shooting day. Jay was drunk and he falls asleep. And uh, during part of the commentary, you can hear him snoring. He's seen, <laughs> he's passed out in the hotel room. You can hear him snoring. So and of course they're making fun of him. So um, I think well, maybe next time we do this, I might have to bring Jeremy in and see if we can do something with him with with mall rats. If we can figure out a way to play some of that and and you know get Jeremy London involved with it as well. That that would be awesome. I would love to hear his uh, his inside uh, his inside, inside baseball. Comment. Yeah, for I, sure. I've heard the stories. I just don't know if most of them are going to be appropriate for 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 broadcast. That's the beauty of it. It's <laughs> that's that's why it works. There is no, there are no rules. Come on, Scott, you know that. Oh, I mean, I, I won't be speaking out of turn. It doesn't matter. But he's, well, I mean, me and him have talked about it. But you know, for the longest time, he didn't think that, that Kevin. You know, after it was done, he thought Kevin hated him, and which may be true. I mean, <laughs> I mean, let's face facts. I've, I've known, I've known Jason, Jason's, or Jason, Jeremy is part of my family, and uh, I mean, I'm very, very, very close. You know, he can, he can have his moments. There, there's been times where I've had to. Pretty much tell him, look, dude, shut the hell up, or we're not going to be talking anymore. But uh, you know, luckily, I, I mean, I think it's him and him. I mean, you could be out with all of your friends, you know, at any given time. But they, uh, 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 I guess, they ended up making back up, or however it went, because hopefully, was it Mallrats Two, maybe coming out sooner or later. That's what I, that's what the rumor is. I think Kevin is literally writing it right now as we speak. He said he was on page seventy five yesterday, and uh, well, yeah. you can let him know we have a closed down mall here. <laughs> a I, closed down mall. I here. think we have a closed down mall everywhere, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are our malls really a thing anymore? I don't know. Uh, my kids don't seem to go there. They're like fourteen and seventeen, so. Yeah, they don't. Oh, they they don't the right age. It's not like it was. No, it's not like it was. Well, I think nowadays it's all these outlet malls. Like I think anytime my yeah. daughter goes, she's twenty three or almost twenty three, and it's usually Hot Topic or uh, I forget <laughs> what the other one is, but usually it's Hot Topic. She always wants to go to. Yeah, and it's it's just it, there's like the few like okay stores, and then there's a bunch of you know just different things that normally wouldn't have made it in the mall in the past that now make it. And it's just kind of, it's very different, very different vibe going to the mall. But then most of us are like, we don't want to go out in public anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the cool thing is, you know, actually you know, hot topics is a perfect example of, of like Mike was talking about earlier, how, you know, the, the things we love used to get you beat up. You have to be, you to be a closet comic book fan or a closet anime fan or however right. it went. And yep. now you've got, you know, hot topic, which you, when you walk around, it's nothing but, but it's the Harley Quinn store. Or the yeah, yeah, much. Much. It's either death metal or comic books or Rick and Morty. So yeah, or Rick and Morty. Yeah. 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 Okay. Or anime. You know, that's something I still, honestly, in, in all this time, I keep getting people to ask me about it and no offense against anybody who watches it, likes it, loves it. I, I, I watched like two episodes. It was just something I couldn't get into. Maybe I'm just too old. It's past my time. I don't think that's it. Unless I don't think so, Scott, because I'm older than you. And yeah, I, I love it. I It's just yet. Yeah, it should grab you from the start. And if it doesn't, um, so be it. Well, I think it's one of those things. I did watch the uh, the episode, which I actually I did love. The very first thing I ever saw from them was the uh, uh I guess they did transcripts of a court. Oh, that's I awesome! Yeah, you can. Yeah, that I is awesome. That and completely lost my mind watching it. I laughed so hard. And then I went back trying to watch some of the episodes, and I just, I, I don't know. I just couldn't. Maybe I got to give it another chance. Man, can you throw up the link to that? Uh, yes, I can actually. That would be awesome. Uh, yeah, yes, for anyone who hasn't seen it, they there was an actual case in Georgia 
uh, it was a man defending himself to uh, a judge, and it's hilarious. And it's freaking uh, brilliant. It's it's fantastic. Dan Harmon brought it into uh, work, and he's like, "I would love to hear Rick and Morty do this." I th- I think that's how it went down, or one of the the writers and um, Justin Roiland just started doing it, and that there's a little. It's it's not terribly animated, but it, no. it is animated. So and it, it, it is probably amazing. one of the is is great because you can't write crap like this. No, no, and, and as genius as Dan Harmon is, no, there's <laughs> no way he could write this. Uh, I almost want to go back and see if you can find the original, like if there was ever a video of the original uh, court case to go through and look at, because <laughs> I, I I really want to see. It, it's kind of whole like the whole thing like. Um, uh, I don't know if you all heard of the whole thing about the the booty warrior that was on the boondocks. Uh, <laughs> but I like oh that anime, but I haven't seen that one. Well, so there's actually it's based off of a real documentary about um, this guy in jail, and I went back and watched the whole thing. But I, honestly, if I would have watched the original presentation of it, uh, I probably would have been very very creeped out. But after watching the Boondocks version. Then going back and watching the original, it all seems like a comedy, period. Well, life imitates art, art imitates life. Sure. Uh, Maybe? I don't know. <laughs> Let's go there, Jen. <laughs> I'm trying to, trying to make it sound classy, I guess. It, 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 there's just things that you come in contact with that you just can't make up. Like, if I ever like do interiors and I have to draw a strip club in the background, I almost got in a wreck when we lived in Louisville, Kentucky, because there's this there was a club that was, you know, on my way to work. It was the, like the thoroughbred lounge. It's, it's Louisville, Kentucky. Because why? Why not? Why it's not? not. <laughs> Best schools in town. Um, but I almost had a wreck because of the sign, and it said "Deep Dreams and Chicken Wings." <laughs> wow! I was just like, what? <laughs> and I was like, is there? Is, and is there? Is there another strip club called the Glue Factory? <laughs> you got to go to the glue factory. Nice. <laughs> retired Phillies. Where they put old strippers to die. Seriously, that's oh man, I wish I, I, wish I had the, the start up for that because I mean, it sells itself. The glue factory. Yeah. The glue factory. Yeah. <laughs> I could, uh, but uh, when I read that sign, I was like, I can't make this up. So yeah, that will happen one day in a panel somewhere. I love it. The glue factory. Uh, factory. D-section scars and bullet wounds. (laughs) Jesus. (laughs) (laughs) It's just, but you know, sometimes you get those things that are so out there. They're so outlandish that they permanently scar your brain. So you're like, I have to do something about this. Actually, believe it or not, we used to drive down to Orlando quite a lot. And just south of where you are, Jen, is where you went down. There, there is actually, I, I cannot remember the name of the the, the, the club, but there are signs yeah, everywhere. Every right Cafe, Cafe Risque. Yeah. Cafe Risque, that's the name of it. And, and it's like, like, like one sign is in, about the stuff, and then the other sign is about the buffet. Yes, yeah, so so it's basically it's an old Stuckies they have converted into a strip club. So you can go in and get their buffet, and jo- but the only thing you can't do is like there's not a laundromat in back. If they did, then they probably like have the military crowd completely bamboozled. <laughs> is that part of the come on? It's like come get your pecan log stuffed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the best there, there is a slogan. I can't remember the name of or what it is for the life of me. What's you know, Jen? <laughs> that one I know. No, I but I know what you're talking about because it's every time we go to Disney, we pass those, and the kids are like, "What does that mean?" It's like, "Oh, yeah, got it." There's a billboard every half mile. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, yeah. every other half mile is a billboard of Jesus. So <laughs> yeah. So you get billboard of Cafe Risque, and then you get your palate cleanse of Jesus, and then you get your Risque, and then you get your Jesus. <laughs> we only had south of the border, so <laughs> we send mixed messages. Well, uh, keep going south of the border, past south of the border, you get to Cafe Risque for sure. Oh, <laughs> you know. By then, I just zoned out and I was like just hitting all the way down, <laughs> all cylinders. 
But yeah, that was one of the places. Every time we would drive down, we'd always have to stop and like take pictures in front of the signs. But we never went to the actual place, so I wanted to. We we never had a chance to actually go to the place. I guess it's right there in uh, I think it's right around Gainesville area. It's just it's and, just north of Gainesville, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and right we always wanted to go. I, I wanted to go just get a T-shirt. Just, yeah. so and dysentery. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, Funny oh, yeah. story though is right next door. There's a Chevron. I've actually gassed up one time going back home. <laughs> sure you have. Like, I have the kids. Come on now. <laughs> You're like, oh boy. <laughs> but at, at night. At night, that place is like Disneyland, lit up and disco balls everywhere, and on the outside. I don't know. You know, South Florida knows how to make everything appealing. Yeah. So you know, that's that's, that's what they do. It is. Uh, it is funny though. It is funny. I'm not it. surprised that Dave Bain has a story about it. <laughs> oh God! Is he on? Okay, let's see. I, I am not look. surprised in the least that Dave Bain has a story about it. Uh oh. He, he stopped in there and felt obligated to order some food. Um, the special was the fur burger. Uh, he opted for the key lime pie. I think it was the least amount of interaction. <laughs> I would know about that because I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Dave. Uh, so I, I guess it depends. Never mind. No, I'm not even going to go there. Sorry, Jen. And uh, <laughs> it's, all good. it's all good. But I mean, it is one of those weird things. That you see when you're driving down to South Florida, yeah. yeah, it's kind of one of those those things you almost have to do. You have to 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 see it, and and until you drive through, you 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 would sit there and think that that there's no way that that a strip club is spending this much money on on advertisement. Yeah. But that that's hey, but that's the thing though. That's something that's like when this whole Tiger thing blew up and Tiger King or whatever has gone crazy. Everybody's like, oh my god, people are like that, and all of us in Florida are like, yeah. that's like Tuesday. <laughs> that's, like Tuesday. <laughs> that's like my uncle's cousin. <laughs> I, I have not watched an episode, but everything I've seen on, on the internet has proved to me that it's just a day in the life of one of the suburbs outside of Fort Lauderdale. I remember when that was going on. I remember when all of that stuff was happening because I remember the commercials on TV. <laughs> and I was like, oh. oh my God, I didn't realize they were okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes that makes sense. Well, San Sanchez <laughs> called me the other day and he asked me, Have you watched it? I said, Mike, I'm white. I'm not that white. <laughs> <laughs> we watched a couple, but it was kind of like, oh man. Honestly, I, I watch it. it. It's like a train wreck. You oh. you feel bad for watching it. But you 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 slow down. I was like a car wreck. You you slow down and, and rubberneck because you want to see what's going on, and you can't wait to see what's going to happen next. Because same thing, you can't write crap like this. No, you can't. You can't. Yeah, that definitely falls in that uh, that category for sure. It so. does. I mean, you got everything from raising tigers to polygamy to uh, uh, homosexual marriage to guys who are not gay to to. <laughs> Crazy. Murder plots to every. I mean, you're like to to a tiger ate my husband, but his body was never found. It just it's all over the place. Jen, it's crap imitating art. So Lisa <laughs> <laughs> Frank and said, "We can church this up, y'all." Yeah. <laughs> that I, oh my god, I would love to see that. <laughs> Basically, well, yeah, I mean, be the satanic church. I know, right? Well, it's a cult of some type, but I mean, it's just it. it the, I grew up in the states, so it's kind of like, oh, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's it's it was it's still funny to to laugh and and watch that show and the ridiculousness. But yeah, that is imitating wannabe art. Yeah. Whew. All right, so now, now where do we go from Tiger King? Yeah, hey, well, Scott, stick with Rick and Morty. Uh, there's a talking pickle in it, for God's sakes. I mean, yeah, I mean, and I'll be honest with you. I, believe it or not, I actually have a Pickle Rick smoking jacket, a uh, little little uh, smoking jacket yeah. slash robe. Oh, uh, my daughter damn. Bought it. Uh, then, I mean, I've got my, my – I said my daughter loves it. She keeps telling me about it, and I just – I like I said, it's just – there's so much other stuff to watch that just has never appealed to me to sit down and go, you know what? I have to watch this. But I've also had nobody other than my daughter saying, you have to watch this. <laughs> I'm not going to say you have to watch it, but you really should. To, to me, it, it's um, if I didn't get through the first season of Breaking Bad, I would have missed everything that came after. Well, the see, first now, that's another one I actually have issues with. I've never gotten through the first season of Breaking Bad. 
it took get me through the first season to watch and the, the first three. That's it's they're tough to watch the first. Actually, I I you know Jay, I'm gonna go the first six are tough to get through, but after that, man, do they throw? They don't even they skip second gear altogether. Go right to fourth. Oh yeah. So okay, all right. I was I was well, committed after after I finally I guess made myself watch it. I committed myself. I, I liked it. I, I watched all of the end. Once they introduced Skinny Pete, I was like, "There you are." <laughs> that, I that, just need that, skinny. I need me some Skinny Pete. Yeah, not combo, not uh, <laughs> Skinny Pete. No, you kidding? Skinny Pete was he was the gateway for everything else. Badger, everybody. <laughs> so you're like, wow, that's amazing. All right, well, I'm going to step away for one second while I refill my okay. my, my Ming Chin glass. That's right. And I'm going to be right back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is Ming Chin of Pilsner. Ming Chin, that's racist, Ming. I, I would sue. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to laugh over here. That's fine. <laughs> you yeah. them laugh. That's no small feat, Mike Zapsen. <laughs> <laughs> well, if Mike comes down to Biloxi, then they'll make you a Mike. Mike Glass, maybe I can't make promises. Yeah, I. So I was asking before this: Are you are are you taking a break right now, Jen? Are you drawing? Are you taking commissions? Can people book things? Um, I'm not taking commissions right now, um, just because getting stuff out is difficult. Right. Uh, but I'm taking a, a little like like not hiatus or anything, but like little mini sabbatical to just kind of explore new things like painting oh, and whatnot. Cool. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, I love comics and I love uh, drawing, but I want to be able to um, use my own imagination instead of having to constantly be prompted for things. Gotcha, I thought you were gonna say pay bills, so, but well, <laughs> that's, also, that's also fair. That too, well, and then of course, you know, then all of this happened and, you know, I'm like, I need some time to myself and now I'm homeschooling, so like, I have no time for it. <laughs> so, yeah. um, it's just one of those things, but I'm, I'm totally Ricky Bobbing. I don't know what to do with my hands. Yeah. And actually, anybody um, who wants to see, uh, <laughs> hear some of, you can continue talking. I'm going to show some of your artwork. Sure, sure. Yeah. So, there's a Vampirella cover that I did uh, for Port City Comics. So, I've done a few exclusives for stores, and I've worked, you know, uh, for a lot of indie companies. My dog's whining at the door. Um, and um, that's cool. Oh my God, I love that. <laughs> <Which> <laughs> order is Doc Ock. Yeah. It all started because I wanted to draw a pig pen as Venom and it <laughs> snowballed from there. Yeah, that started uh, pre comic book day. Oh, mm -hmm. that is amazing. I love that. <laughs> Thanks. I think my favorite on that is is uh, Snoopy up there, is J. Joe yeah, to James. Yeah. <laughs> but he's always on the typewriter. So, And then, of course, I like to draw monsters and fantasy. So I'm trying to get into that genre oh, as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm not taking commissions right now, um, but I don't Frog. mind, you know, hey, there you are. drawing stuff. Oh, hey. That, that's <laughs> a beautiful film. Well, she was supposed to be a print for this year, and then we all got sick. So. Jen, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm on my phone, so I'm having to make this bigger. But originally I thought Mystique was sitting on a pineapple. I'm like, <laughs> that is... What a great artistic choice for her to sit on a giant pineapple. Why not? A, why not? <laughs> and, then, and I'm like, oh, I see what you did there. Okay, gotcha. A pineapple made out of skulls, Mike. It's uh, of course. A cool well, I, I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? We're allowed to take creative license. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. She can do whatever the hell she wants, man. Yeah. She wants to sit on a giant pineapple. Let's make this a, happen. A, a pineapple the size of a uh, bus bench, beautiful. It's I Mystique did. merged with uh, SpongeBob SquarePants. Yeah, she lives on a pineapple. <laughs> yeah. Yes, she sits on a pineapple under the sea. It's a new mashup. I like this. And this is uh, that is Harley Venom? Quinn Venomized. It I was like a commission. It. He asked That's for ass. yeah, a uh, Venomized Harley Quinn. That's just a the face of it. I don't have the whole picture. I'm, I'm gonna put this one up. I'm, I'm not gonna say anything, but I actually know who owns the original to this piece. Me. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah. The question is, Scott, can you find it? Oh no, I have it. I can, I know exactly where that I know one. You is. have it. I don't know where it is. 
<laughs> it's actually hanging up on the wall. Okay. All right. Just checking. Since the yeah, last that- time we talked, he found some of it. So he has he has located most of it. Yeah, actually, yeah, believe it or not, actually, I went through with the, during this time, this downtime. I went through and I got a few extra portfolios and started putting all, I got them all about artwork together. And, uh-oh, we lost Mike. Um, but I got all my artwork together and started putting in portfolios and living by 17 top loaders and getting everything kind of organized because none of the stuff's for sale. Right. Ex- with the exception, with the exception, we do have what I like to call the broom wall. Uh, we, we have the, the broom wall up and it's basically nothing more than Jen's prints. Okay. <laughs> basically they're, they're all for sale. And anytime any of them sell, they, they, the money goes to Jen or if it's stuff that I've already bought from her, it goes I'm to sorry, me. Honey, what were you and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, you were saying, but actually, we, we actually have some of the stuff that I don't no, even know I, Jen has no anymore. Uh, there's a lot of prints that I've rolled out that I'm not reprinting. Very so, nice. You know, okay. It's just, it is what it is. They're they're old. They're really old. Okay. That's a change. Yeah. The the three spider women prints and the the Gotham girls type prints. And yeah, we have quite a few sets of those that we only have as a set. We're not going to split them up. And uh, you uh, you have have an art book out as well. Is it available? I do have, um, I have a large art book that is a bunch of my covers that I've done because for the most part, I'm a pencil inker. Um, Sorry, that one was me. That's okay. <laughs> um, and I don't you want can, to- You can get the art book, book right here. <laughs> Maybe. I think I might've closed that down. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that, that was me. Um, Give me the link to the other one. <laughs> it's com. It's just my website. So. You mean the one Bing's been trying to get me to put up here? Probably, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't have an online store right now because again, this whole situation of getting things out and mailed out and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. no, I don't blame you. The uh, the post office is kind of a scary place right now. So it is. It's tough, and it's just like I don't want. To, I'm. Uh, we'll go ahead and admit I am difficult I'm to get that done myself. Uh oh, Ming, not you. Does that work? See, I think we, I think we need to do is we need to, Jim, we need to get you to do a uh, something that can hang up at the shared universe studio and get you to do a Ming and Mike. Oh, okay. Hang up up there. Well, we've got yeah, no pressure or anything. I know, right? <laughs> right. Well, I've got this. If you guys want to prompt me on something, you, you, you could do, you could do that Ming, or you could do Mike as Batman and Ming as Robin. Oh God! <laughs> why, why do you do that? I'm not good with likeness, y'all. Y'all are terrible. Just put a beard on one and Just make the other. <laughs> Just do a stick figure. With yeah, because Batman's known for his beard. Yes. <laughs> I'm not I gonna. See, I want to see Jen's version of Punchline. Punchline? Oh, that's that new girl, right? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Yeah, I was about that's to say you got to throw a female character in there for sure. Your um, your depiction of female characters is ex- exceptional, Jen. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank. You. I can draw guys too, though. This gal. Yeah, that's her. That's her. Punchline. Yeah. That's another one, Mike. If you have any left over, was it Batman 92? Yep. 92 doesn't have yeah. yet. If no, you've got any of those left over, those things are selling for like $40, $50 a pop. Yep. We Thanks for the, the tip. Got it. Got it already. Yeah. 89 yeah, thank, was thank, going for like 40 bucks. Thank you, yeah. Keith Collector. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Collector. Yeah. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> we dropped the name again. Yeah. That, that year of the villain, number three, was another one that's going for stupid money right now. You pretty much ask your own price for it. The hell I know. Them. You guys can also talk and stuff while I sketch. You can talk while you sketch too. Yeah. So I'm drawing a little face over here. We're just going to totally Bob Ross it. There. So, Scott, um, I just pulled up uh, our friend Eddie, just pulled up the story here. Uh, if you get bored of uh, me, you know, me, the book me like to be $40 if you want us on your live stream or your podcast. Very reasonable, I feel. However, yeah. There apparently there's a goat farm out there that you can book a, a llama or a goat to attend your stream yard or your Zoom meeting. And Wait, what? You, you can, you, yeah, you can have a llama or a goat uh, be a guest for your next uh, live stream. Uh, it's a, they're they're charging a hundred dollars. So, oh uh, well, you know, maybe I'll need to. Oh my god! Replacing your stuff. Now, I mean, is, you're, the you're in, goat. 
Is the goat in the live stream, or is it just a video of a goat? No, no, it's in the oh, live stream. Dang. I guess you point the camera at it, and you you figure, and you uh you hang out, it hangs out with you in the live stream. Do they send you goat cheese along with it? I think that might be extra. I'm sure you could get some goat cheese with it, for sure. <laughs> for a hundred dollars, I expect some freaking goat cheese. Right. Um. This is or at least a llama talk. <laughs> talking. I want to. I want the talking llama package. Um. The service is called Goat Two Meeting. Go to meeting. Oh my god! <laughs> and uh, well, they've they've had three hundred requests. So for a hundred bucks, yeah, they're they're making a couple bucks there. They're on to something. Mike, I think this question is for you. Is there a lack of bearded comic characters out there? Oh, we lost you. <laughs> Thank you. He'll be back. Oh, there he is. Well, he'll be I, back. Uh, I say yes, Mike. Did you hear that question? Oh yeah, he uh, <laughs> he pulled his. We'll, we'll leave it up there until he gets back. <laughs> I um man, I I think there's a disproportion of non of bearded characters. There could be more, for sure. So would that be considered folliculist? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Mike, did you hear that question? All right, he's got no volume. I think that they do more stubble. I've seen more male characters with stubble, right, like than, a five o'clock shadow, shadow. Yeah, and full, full on beards. Oh, we got uh, Thomas Formonti from uh, one of the guys from Kablam Digital Printing in here with us. Hey, too, Tom. hey Tommy, how you doing? Damn it, see you, Mike. You on his phone. Watch, I'm pretty sure you're gonna see it flying through a window. <laughs> no, it's like, it's like, yeah, tree sky, tree sky, tree sky. Right, asphalt, crack. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, and he's gone. Uh, yeah, we lost. He'll I, he'll be back sooner or later. I I have to I have, I have to bring up Jen. Larry drew that in like a minute. <laughs> it, that's really amazing. Dude, I can tell you, y'all y'all need to get her on uh, over on the. Uh, uh... Oh, there we go. We got you back, Mike. Mike, you hear us? Yeah, sorry about that. My I okay. put on my uh, AirPods because. My dogs were clanging around here. They were carrying each other's bowls because they're assholes. So I'm not sure my how friend, to that. And they're <laughs> dropping them all over the place. So I'm like, oh, my God, you stupid animals. Your coworkers? Your new coworkers? <laughs> I, I wish. You know, they wouldn't do that, Mike, if you would just remember to feed them. It's very simple. Just <laughs> to, hell, to hell with that. That costs money. <laughs> and it, it, it's better than Aren't they supposed to be part wolf anyway? Go hunt. They're, back in the day, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I got two puny little ones who probably would get. Actually, they do get their asses kicked by cats. So. Yeah, Mike. <laughs> um, the question on the floor was: uh, Is there a lack of bearded comic book characters out there? Lack of? Is there any desire for? That's the question. Uh, well, and then they have those artsy goatees. You've got Iron Man. No, that's not, a, that's not a real beard. Oh, that's yes, just like that's a hip true. Uh, you had Cap with his cool beard in um, Endgame. Oh, not Endgame. In, uh, uh, got Infinity Maestro, War. Maestro. Yeah. Maestro's got his big... Uh, so he looks know, nice pretty good. Gray beard Green arrow on. with that really... Yeah. Awesome. You have a kind of swoosh in the handlebar. Yes. Um, and yeah. then you got... Oh, who is Odin. It? Odin is a full beard. But yeah, it's usually like either really creative... You know, very or <laughs> oh, no beard. Yeah. Right. So, huh. Yeah, none or of the stubble. Grizzly Adams stuff going on. Or stubble. Absolutely. Or stubble. The, the stubble. The stubble's a, a big draw. You get the, the little um, scruff on Batman. So, I don't know. The uh, the Wolverine. Mm -hmm. Martin Chop, does that count? Wolverine? No. If, no. Uh, no, no Sabertooth? Really Sabertooth's like full on hairy everywhere, though. Sting with Beast? Oh, yeah. oh, do we know about that? Oh, would you count that as a beard, though? I don't know. It'd be a full-on beard. Full this on is beard. all over. I mean, That's true. You know. um, oh, man, I'm I mean, do, to think. Do, do Jedi count? I mean, you got most of the Jedi. Uh, well, no, 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 no. no. Uh, not, the I don't Jedi. Jedi you don't, get, don't be ridiculous. No, they're not stupid. They're, 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 they're part of the Force. They're, that's a whole different universe. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cross nerd them here, Jason. Come on now. Hey, yeah, cross no brain. cross contaminant can contamination. You can't you do that. <laughs> do we count do we count wizards and hobbits? Ooh. Ooh. See, that would be if you can't count Jedi. 
Yeah, you got to kill. No, we're not. I'm I'm just throwing that out there that Jay, you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> then you have um. Hey, oh, it would be a superhero in my eyes. Doctor Strange has a fancy kind of. Yeah, like, he's got a fancy facial thing. hair. Well, then you got Tony yeah, he Stark has with a, the whole uh, uh, goatee thing. now. So yeah. Huh. So, I mean, you got them, but for the most part, they seem really fancy, like very well groomed. Like you don't see like a wild man, like crazy hair all over, with the exception of Wolverine, Sabretooth Beast. And coming so, up, uh, Red Guardian in Black Widow. Yeah. Well, oh. currently in Red Hood and the Outlaws, Bizarro has uh, a beard. I'd like to see Mr. Freeze with a beard. Wait, what? Frozen dreadlocks. Yeah, Bizarro has a beard right now in Red Hood and the Outlaws. Wow. Me not huh. shave. He's, got, he's, got, he's got a high and tight haircut and a full beard. I, I don't know how I feel about that. But then again, <laughs> Superman's had a beard from uh, time to time. So yeah. that's pretty cool. But if it would be Bizarro, would he would, would like he just have nothing if but you want to go hair? there? Whenever he's out in space, he usually grows a beard. Yeah, but uh, but if it's Bizarro, does that mean he has nothing but ingrown hairs? Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, poor guy. Okay. Did, didn't Colossus have a beer for a while during the AOA stuff? Yeah, but how, I mean, yeah. But do you count stuff. the AOA stuff? He was also missing an arm, so he's trying to compensate. <laughs> that, I mean, would that be part of Colossus's thing, though? If he if he turned if he had a beard and he turned into to his his form, can he pull it out and throw spikes at people? Ooh, that'd be cool. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, like. <laughs> Yeah, I I don't know the the whole transforming thing has always been a an issue for me as far as you know you you've got to have some suspicion of belief when you're when you're dealing with a sci-fi fantasy comic book type world but still at some point along the line you've got to put you got to have some sense of belief in it too. Well, I think if he did you know transform and all that kind of stuff, it would have to be a la Sailor Moon esque. With the squirrelies and the sparkles. <laughs> oh, bring the dogs in, Mike. Come on. Yeah, the it's coworkers. Okay. They're all right. They're fine, dude. We we all have them. If and if you don't, then then you know you're you're not a human being. <laughs> Mine was begging at the door just a minute ago because she heard me. Scott, I'm well, sorry. I cannot hear you. I can hear oh, everybody. Else. I can't hear Scott. Oh, you can't hear me. You're not missing much. I, yeah, you're not. Yeah, you're probably not missing. It's all right. <laughs> it's his show, so I guess so. <laughs> um, Give me some hand well, signs, Scott. That's all I'm asking. Just a couple of hand signs. Yeah, hey, your hands all right, good enough. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. That's all yeah. I needed. I um, before we go, Mike, uh, plug the boxes that we're selling. Mm. Like your, your oh, okay. I can help. Uh, Plug them up. We have we have uh, comic book men curated uh, comic book boxes that we're sending out. Viewerskew related uh, comic books. We're we're pu pulling out some of uh, our back issues that we think are particularly cool. You never know what you're gonna get. You might get um, Superman in the Supermobile from the the seventies. Who doesn't love that? You might yeah. get some uh, Uncanny X Men, John Romita Jr. art. Maybe Jim Lee. You don't know. So one of us will curate uh, a box. We'll also, uh, it's $40 worth of stuff for 25 bucks. Plus we're going to throw in a signed eight by 10 by all the comic book men, except for Kevin Smith. Hey Bing, will you, uh, will you post a link over in the private chat so I can pull it up? Um, just call the store or, actually go, go to, uh, Jay and Bob stuff at gmail.com. And uh, I'll tell you how to go from there. Yeah, I was watching the podcast with y'all doing it the other day. And uh, honestly, uh, whoever was y'all podcasting with and came again, up with a brilliant Scott, idea. That. You were coming in horribly. Yeah, that was uh, um, that was our friend uh, Sal Crivelli from Comic Pop. The um, Check them out on YouTube. Uh, he came up with that idea. Yeah, that's great. And um, actually, uh, hats off to you also, Scott. You... You're the one who told us, you know, get your asses out there and start yeah. selling some back issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. That's, That's awesome. Right. That awesome. All right, guys. Well, thank you all for stopping by. And um, hey, yeah, thank you. Will, uh, thank you, Jay. Again, um, guys, thank you, you so much. Great to see you for sure. Yeah, same. It was so good to hang out with y'all. 
Jen, and it was. It was great to meet you and great to, to watch you do your art. Thank you. God, I'm Thank so you. sorry. I can't hear you, damn it. That's hard. Speak in sign. He, he hears I, you. We already did. <laughs> no, we already, we already did. gave me the sign. Uh -oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Everybody who's tuning Jay, in, thank you for watching. Yes, sir. Uh, just before we go, if you're looking at anything, you can go to, if you're looking at a podcast, you can go to a shareduniverse.com. If you're looking for some artwork, you can go to jenbrumall.com. If you're looking for some of those uh, uh, boxes, you can email jayandbobstuff at gmail.com. And we are out. Later. <laughs>